You may have seen this video yesterday running in the background, not known what it was. This is a CNN crew. They were stopped by police while trying to shoot video of this facility in Shanghai. Officers chased down the crew's vehicle on foot, then asked the crew to stop recording video. And they also asked the crew to hand over some of its video footage. The crew did actually comply. What were they shooting footage of? Well, it was all to do with the hacking issue that we've been telling you about and the hacking group connected to the People's Liberation Army of China. Government-backed hacking of Canadian, British, American companies taking over the world. They've taken on the Canadian government, they've taken on the U.S. government, even the United Nations. Simon Kent wrote about this in today's uh, Sun Media Papers, joins us now from Toronto. And uh, Simon, this is, an, this is a story I can't get enough of because people will t still tell me there's no shortage of China apologists Oh, you don't know that it's it's the Chinese government. It's all good. Well, we certainly do know after that footage you showed and this story. It, it's quite extraordinary. Talk about red faces over red China. They've been caught and they've been caught out really badly. And it just looks so bad because it is bad for China. They're going around methodically and systematically stalking major companies around the world. We're talking media organisations. We're talking giant companies like Apple all around the world trying to get secrets, trying to see what they can do, trying to get into their systems, trying to infiltrate them. And don't forget, there's no, there, there's no disconnect in China yeah. between what the government does and what private enterprise does and what the military does. It's all one and it's and, all and together. And this is, this is the list here of some yep. of the places that you mentioned mm. in your column today, the United Nations. They want to know what other countries are saying about them. Sure. NASA, Apple, Facebook. I mean, so they get into Apple. They want to be able to steal the technology. We know why they went after the New York Times. They wrote bad things about their leaders. But they get into Apple, steal the technology, replicate it, put it out there. And even if they only sell in their own market, they don't care because that's big enough. They'll make money. Well, that's sort of industrial espionage, which it is. I mean, that is worth hundreds of thousands of jobs and, and millions of millions of dollars because to know what a big opponent like Apple is going to do next, what they plan to do next, what their next apps, what their next feature is going to be for a Chinese manufacturer, that's gold. And so they can anticipate what, what is happening or they can reverse engineer. And the Chinese, let's face it, are pretty isolated on the world stage. They're very much like the, U the old USSR was during the Cold War. So the USSR used to do the same thing, the espionage, and try and reverse engineer military hardware and, and, and that sort of thing. And the Chinese are doing that as well. And, and again, they're getting caught out. And as far as the trust level goes for a country like China, it looks really bad because how do you do business with a country? How do you set up a company in a country where you feel that they're always going to be looking over your shoulder and hacking into what you're doing? It, it, it's um, really bad business practice. It's bad political practice. And on a geopolitical scale, it, it is really... Um, Bad, bad, bad stuff for China. One of the ways that we dealt with this in the Cold War was that we, we led the Russians astray. And there's a story out there called the Farewell Dossier mm. that talks about how they would send, they would purposely mislead uh, Russian agents and then they would send back bad information. In mm. one case, they even allowed them to steal uh, software to run pipelines, uh, oil pipelines. And then the pipeline blew up in Siberia because it had been, uh, they'd put in, little malicious bits of software because so, they knew the Russians were trying to steal it. How do you deal with a country like China that's well, trying to deal with What so you've just touched on there might be a, a way of going about it because you look at China and their military forces at the moment, you're seeing a whole lot of equipment that seems to be very close replicas of American equipment. I'm thinking of the C-17, um, the four-engine jet transport. Suddenly the Chinese have something similar. Suddenly they've got replicas that look very close to um, uh, American um, fighter technology. Well, maybe they could... Um, Send some of those plans over with a few bugs in it and we'll see planes well, falling out of the sky. That's not beyond reason, Brian. That, that is uh, one of the reasons, though, that the F-35 mm. is behind schedule and the costs are going up. Mm. My understanding is they've had to write the computer, uh, computer coding for that several times for the weapon system, for the navigation systems, because the Chinese have been able to get in and steal it. And it's been That's how big it is. Yeah, constantly encrypted and, and the encrypted encryption codings that changed it, changed and all that information on that the aircraft that you mentioned is being shared with partners all around the world and, and they're facing the same problem. I mean, it is huge. There's so much at stake here when you're talking about defence matters. There's a huge amount at stake when you're talking about privileged commercial information and we get back to companies like Apple and, and other major world corporations. They work really hard to protect their information. I mean, they have intellectual copyrights. So they're not going to give that away to someone for free. They're not going to let the... 
China or anyone come in and take it. That's why a company might manufacture in China, but why would they do their research and development in a country that has such scant regard for intellectual property? They're not going to do it, and this is not the only case. More of this is going to come out in the future, Brian, believe me. All right, Simon, thanks so much. Uh, our governments don't appear to be taking it seriously on the outside, but hopefully they're like a duck, you know, calm on the top and paddling like crazy underneath. Let us know what you think. Byline at sunmedia.ca. Morning.